Okay, so now, brothers, in this portion of the video, we're going to address Miss Rihanna, who has been at the epicenter of certain accusations that she is a Luciferian or Satanist for many years now. Not only because of her affiliation with Jay-Z, who most people understand is a very high-level witch within the entertainment industry, Coven, but just because of the imagery that she portrays and that she propagates not only about herself, but also within her musical videos. It's very clear that she has received a very astute occult slash Luciferian education and that she is a witch. And she's going to convey that to you. Not only is she going to convey that she's a witch, she's also going to confess that her purpose and the purpose of all other higher level entertainment industry participants is to teach children to venerate Saturn, AKA Pan. And we know that what is directly associated with the veneration of Pan slash Saturn slash Baal is blood sacrifice, pederasty and pedophilia, the worship of these celestial bodies, so on and so forth. But let's pay very close attention to the lyrics of this little skit song. It's not a real song. It's just a tune that they concocted for this skit here, which is allegedly supposed to be comedic. But as usual, in many of these comedic skits, they hide the truth within so-called or alleged jest. Once again, pay very close attention to the lyrics. She's going to tell you that it's about fire and ice and they're taking over the whole world. Also pay attention to how she's dressed. She's going to have on the black and white for duality. Notice that the word knowledge is written on the board behind her. The god of Gnosticism, or the quote-unquote Demiurge, is Saturn, at least for the witches, which is what Rihanna is. Rihanna, and Sharana, we like fire and ice, taking over the whole world, the whole world. from the mountain tops down to the boys and girls. Hey brothers, you hear that? <laughs> she says, the tree of knowledge grows because we plant the seed. What is the tree of knowledge? The tree of knowledge, or as they call it in Hermetic Kabbalah, it is the quote-unquote lipothic tree of life. Actually, the quote-unquote tree of knowledge, the dark side of the tree of life in the garden. That is what they're pushing. That's what they're promoting. Once again, Saturn is aligned with the quote-unquote serpent. Saturn is also aligned with the concept of Prometheus meaning the person or the entity, the quote-unquote God, who brought fire to mankind. Fire is an analogy or metaphor for knowledge. You understand? So Rihanna's letting you know that when it comes to that dichotomy of cosmic fire and cosmic ice, she's been taught that they're both just two sides of the same coin, and she's a soldier in the effort to make sure that the masses worship Saturn. Also pay attention to the fact that the only student who receives a close-up in this entire segment is this young boy right here who's sitting in the back of the class wearing black and red because that is to signify that he's a quote-unquote witch in training I tell you, Rihanna has no rhythm whatsoever. This broad can't dance or sing. So it's very obvious how she got into the entertainment industry. She was prepped before she got there. And after she got there, she was given her mission. And that's all that there is to that. Like For example, people talk about how Rihanna is dating some rich Arab guy or some other female singer is dating some rich African guy. The high-level R&B singers and all the other female singers in the entertainment industry are witches who get hired out to prominent billionaires all across the earth to be concubines. That's all they are. Okay, I'll take it from here. <laughs> also notice that quote unquote Shirani is only showing his left eye for the mother goddess. Okay, we like fire and ice, taking over the whole world. From the mountaintop down to the boys and girls. So that's the purpose. That's the goal. 
That's why, as I state, they use the Marvel Cinematic Universe to push the worship or the veneration of the quote-unquote divine feminine. They're not concerned about 40-year-old and 30-year-old grown men who are going to look at that and say, this is some bullshit, this is nonsense. They want to make sure that they ingrain in the minds of these young boys and girls to venerate Lucifer. That means what? Woman over man, homosexual over heterosexual, the denial or rejection of any form of belief in a deity affiliated with the Bible, so on and so forth. That's really all it's about. But once again, just to return to the overall concept of this segment right here with Rihanna, she's pushing fire and ice, the coming together of the opposites, the coming together or the reclamation of the division between the solar logos and the Saturnian principle and how they're just both two sides of the same coin. From the mountaintops, we're going to teach the children about the cosmic fire and the cosmic ice, which is Ragnarok. The oncoming struggle between the witches of this world, i.e. the Luciferians, against the masses. And the admission that she is a teacher of the tenets of the quote-unquote tree of knowledge. Okay, so now brothers, this is going to be the epilogue for the Rihanna portion of Volume 1 pertaining to the cult of Saturn. The understanding of the cosmic fire versus the cosmic ice dynamic that is so pervasive in the entertainment industry or at least how it's projected out to the masses. Many people are being taught about these ideologies unbeknownst to them. And one of their core priestesses is Miss Rihanna who as we saw in the video unabashedly states that she's a teacher of the principles of Saturn. Quote unquote fire and ice. She says we're taking over the whole world. Those are her words not mine. She states that she's a believer in the teachings of the quote-unquote tree of knowledge. What is that in reference to? That's in reference to the great quote-unquote demiurge Saturn, who's analogized in quote-unquote ancient mythology as Prometheus, the bringer of fire, the quote-unquote divine fire to mankind, who liberated mankind, also known as the quote-unquote great teaching serpent. If you pay very close attention, Rihanna pretty much very blatantly tells you that she has embraced the quote-unquote dark path or the quote-unquote dark light, what they call the veneration of certain components of the mother goddess archetype, especially pertaining to the moon. Rihanna's favorite deity, quote-unquote female deity, seems to be Kali, the quote-unquote blood drinker. And as we can see here with the checkerboard floor as well as the checkerboard wall, they're once again trying to accentuate duality, the bringing together or the coming together of opposing forces, of polarities. That really is the core tenet of quote-unquote Saturnianism. How do you reconcile polar opposites? The way that you do that is by creating chaos to bring in your own order. Remember, I'd say probably 10 or 11 years ago, Jay-Z, Rihanna, and Kanye West had the classic song, Run This Town. All throughout that song, they're utilizing lyrics that are trying to communicate to the listener that they're talking about a quote-unquote new world order. That's what they were referencing. Their job is to prep the people. They're basically spellcasters. That's the job of a mainstream musical artist, is, is to project themselves as a harbinger of the world to come. And you have to prep the people. You have to inundate them with symbolic images that are going to accustom them to, to various ideologies that they're going to be affronted with through the mainstream news, so on and so forth. So they'll use a Jay-Z or a Beyonce or a Rihanna to teach the so-called black community to accept homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, which are all components of the quote-unquote tree of knowledge. As Rihanna already stated, she adheres to. We can see her here standing right next to the quote-unquote ace of spades. The spade symbol is a symbol of death. And as I've already stated, you'll oftentimes see Rihanna making gestures or sticking her tongue out, putting up the monocornuto hand sign, things of that nature to show you that she has a very close kinship in her mind to the quote-unquote Hindu goddess Kali, the quote-unquote goddess of time. She's also the snake goddess, but we'll delve into that a little bit later. I'm certainly going to be addressing the concept of the snake goddess in another video, especially how that, that energy of the quote-unquote snake goddess is very pervasive, not just in the music industry, but in all components of the entertainment industry. It's very obvious that many, if not most, of these quote-unquote female celebrities are being taught about the female quote-unquote deity pantheon and how they want to embody those various manifestations.
Now, brothers, this entity here is a quote unquote Celtic goddess by the name of Rhiannon. Now, is this the inspiration for the name that was given to the quote unquote MK asset known as Rihanna? Who knows? I myself believe that to be the case. And as we can see here in this relatively modernized depiction of this quote unquote Celtic goddess, she's exhibiting many of the normal traits of the quote unquote horse goddess. That being that she's riding side saddle upon a white horse. We see in the upper right hand corner of this depiction the white doves. As I've stated in other videos, the white dove is a symbol of the quote unquote mother goddess because she is supposed to personify in a quote unquote human form the Holy Spirit. That is why the Luciferians or those who adhere to the quote unquote pagan mythos, they believe that the mother goddess represents a part of the quote unquote trinity because of that obfuscation. And that happened from the ancient world, first with Eve, then with Semiramis, that they tried to align certain aspects of the woman or the quote unquote divine feminine with the Holy Spirit. But just getting back to the point, and I, I went into more depth on this in the video that I did pertaining to Nipsey Hussle. I showed how they used the quote unquote goddess of the white horse as an indicator that he was going to be sacrificed to the quote unquote moon goddess Luna who was another manifestation of the mother goddess who was depicted riding side saddle on the white horse, which was supposed to be a harbinger of death for whoever it was who was in her vicinity. In this case, it was Mr. Nipsey Hussle. As we all know by now, there was a very famous photo shoot executed by GQ, I believe it was, where Nipsey Hussle and Lauren London, they depicted themselves as the modern version of the moon goddess slash horse goddess Celine or Rhiannon. And her man, her, her consort, her husband, and Demion. As I tell you brothers all the time, and it might sound very far-fetched to you, the entertainment industry is a witch coven. They adhere to the Babylonian Kemetic Mystery School system, the Greek pantheon of gods, the Roman pantheon of gods, the Celtic pantheon of gods, the Hindu pantheon of quote-unquote gods, so on and so forth. Because they're trying to create a modern composite of what it was exactly that the ancients worshipped. They want to know how they got their power on the left-hand side, on the Luciferian side. Because they already know, at least the elite of the elite, they already know that the scriptures have nothing to do with them whatsoever. So they're trying to court energy through the witchcraft of the quote-unquote left-hand side. But just to get back to the point, do I believe that the name Rihanna is an allusion to the quote-unquote mother goddess Rihanna? Yes, I do. Okay, so brothers, we've seen this type of imagery before particularly in the case of R. Kelly and his alter ego as the quote-unquote Pied Piper. Oftentimes in the music industry, their handlers, a.k.a. their producers or the record label executives will have their assets create an alter ego and they'll have them name that alter ego. That's really just another component of their programming, another a, a pseudonym to match up with that, that personality that's hidden within their subconscious, so on and so forth. As we can see here, Rihanna's wearing some type of mask that might that might allude to her being a quote unquote cat woman or some beta programmed sex kitten, something along those lines. But let's pay very close attention because she has a tattoo inside of her ear that is an indicator of what her allegiances are spiritually. Right inside of her left earlobe, we can see the quote unquote inverted pentagram for the goat god, who is the god of the entertainment industry. And is the god of this entire world. That is who the elite venerate. That's who they worship. So on and so forth. Believe it or not. The quote unquote goat is viewed as being the, the spirit. Or the ba of Asar. Or Ptah. That is why they worship the, the image or the energy of the goat. Once again. The goat is viewed as being the spirit or the soul of Asar. The king who was dethroned in the so called golden age of mankind also known as Kronos or, or Saturn or Ptah. And they believe that he's going to come back to rule again for a thousand years. And he's, he's analogized through the image of the goat or the bull or any type of animal who has prominent horns, the quote unquote father God or the horned God entity. So now this is another, <laughs> another photo that is speaking volumes. Is showing once again that Rihanna has another personality alter that is extremely sexual in nature. The quote-unquote beta sex kitten programming. 
these these female artists especially they get passed all around the industry they actually get hired out to notable figures all across the world especially the billionaires from africa and from saudi arabia the middle east etc i've mentioned this in other videos when you hear these stories about janet jackson or rihanna dating an arab billionaire or they're dating a nigerian bill billionaire all that's bullshit they're forced to act as as high profile escorts of course everything that i'm saying is alleged but that is the situation brothers you'll see these fake stories <laughs> you'll see these fake stories where they'll say janet jackson or rihanna is marrying their saudi billionaire boyfriend all this bullshit and it never happens because it was never meant to happen it's just another playboy billionaire's dream to to bed down a prominent songstress or r&b singer or dancer etc that's what would have happened to Sierra had she not been able to reel in that MK athlete and that simp, Russell Wilson. You would have seen stories about her, quote unquote, dating an Arab billionaire or a Nigerian billionaire or an oil magnet or something along those lines, because that's what happens to them. When they can no longer move units, they start to prostitute themselves, believe it or not, or get prostituted by their handlers, whether it be Jay-Z or Baby or P. Diddy or, or whoever. They get sent out on that strip. If their album is not moving units anymore, that's what happens. So, brothers, like most assets in the entertainment industry, not only is she a witch, but she's also under mind control. One of the core components of the mind control program, especially pertaining to entertainers, is the Disney programming. You'll often see, for no apparent reason whatsoever, especially many of these female MK assets, they'll wear a Mickey Mouse hat or Mickey Mouse shirt so on and so forth i've mentioned this in other videos mickey mouse is a metaphor or an analogy to the quote-unquote god of the sun apollo or heru i'll be delving into that deeper in another video but that is who the quote-unquote mouse or mouse god is meant to be an allusion to also notice that mickey mouse is often depicted as a quote-unquote wizard but as i stated that's for another video for another day So brothers, as we can see here, this photo is relatively blatant. It's Rihanna and her left eye is radiating light. It's meant to show that she has been illuminated. She has the quote unquote eye of Hathor. She has great wisdom, insight, etc. Because she is simpatico with the energies of the mother goddess. Also known as Isis or as I've already mentioned, Hathor, Wajet, etc. But I'll be delving into the Wajet concept in a minute. But as we can see once again, Rihanna is showing you that she's been quote-unquote illuminated. And it's very unfortunate. There are so many people who can see certain things, but because they don't actually delve into many of the components of these ideologies, they can't do much more than speak in vagaries, like using terms Illuminati or things of that nature. Terms that people have been numbed to. So it behooves us to do some real research so that we can expound on many of these images and these symbols that we see. The importance of this is to help, especially a lot of brothers out there, understand exactly why people say some of the things that they say. And hopefully they'll grasp that due to the fact that so many notable figures in the entertainment industry are willing to follow protocol when it comes to the mystery school system, that must mean that they're getting some benefit from it. And therefore, if they see validity in the mystery school system, that also must mean that the righteous side is valid as well. Because you can't have wickedness without righteousness. You can't have illumination on the left-hand side without illumination on the right-hand side as well. There's always a just weight and a just balance. Now, this is a still shot from, <laughs> from a very memorable and revelatory video that Rihanna did many years ago called Disturbia. That was her way of, of trying to convey, or the director of the video trying to convey to the viewing audience that the process of putting her under mind control was very traumatizing for her. What she calls disturbia was just the process of her being introduced to the arcane and the occult aspects of the entertainment industry. And of course, this was also, I believe, one of the songs on the soundtrack for the film Disturbia, starring another MK asset, Shia LaBeouf. And we've seen him go through a series of mental breakdowns that have been very public over the last few years. At one time, he was the golden boy for Holly Weird, and he just, he wasn't built strong enough to deal with the programming. 
Now, this is another aspect of the of the craft within the entertainment industry, especially for the young females. They'll have the term shush tattooed on their right index finger for Hippocrates. As I tell you brothers all the time, Harpo or Hippocrates, which is just Horus as a child or Heru as the child. It's very important. He's known as the quote unquote divine child. And he is worshipped within the entertainment industry or the quote unquote craft. And it's also meant to, to signify that they're privy to the secrets and they will never tell. And Rihanna is not the only person with this tattoo. Let me do a close up on this. As we can see, Rihanna has the shush dot 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 tatted on her right index finger. She has her right index finger over her mouth, which is a symbol of Harpocrates, the boy god, who's always depicted on the lotus flower. The lotus flower represents purity. It also represents the, the vagina of the mother goddess. This is Rihanna again doing a very similar pose with her right index finger over her mouth to show what? That she is a quote-unquote goddess. She's within the, the pantheon of the modern-day gods and goddesses of the entertainment industry. And she will never tell. She adheres to all the precepts of the worship of the androgynous deity known as the Baphomet, the bringing together of opposing forces, Saturnian concepts, cosmic fire and cosmic ice, as she sang in that video. And she will never tell. Now, just to provide some context, this is another singer from all the way over in Britain by the name of Lily Allen. She has the exact same tattoo on her right index finger. Why is that? Because she was also put through the programming. What are the chances that <laughs> that two females from two totally different countries would have the same exact tattoo on their right index finger? Doing the same exact sign. I'll probably be doing an in-depth video on Harpocrates and and what that's actually about. The veneration of the quote-unquote divine child. But that's for another video. I'm just going to lightly touch on it in this one. So brothers, this is another relatively famous figure. Or at least at one time she was relatively famous. By the name of Lindsay Lohan. And isn't it interesting how so many of these, um, these assets in the entertainment world... They have a first and last name that starts with the same letter. Lauren London, Lindsay Lohan. Very interesting. But either way, as we already have seen with Lily Allen and Rihanna, she also has that same tattoo on her right index finger. Look at this. Shush. I wonder why they all have that same tat, brothers. What is it that they have to keep under wraps? Hmm. Very interesting. And as we all remember, Lindsay Lohan had a very public meltdown a few years ago. She had what they call self-destruct programming or her self-destruct programming was initialized. That's why she just lost all, <laughs> all sanity. At one time back in the Mean Girls era, niggas was checking for this little bra. Remember that? <laughs> she was in Mean Girls. Her little breast of seeds was popping. Had a little booty on her. All of a sudden, she just lost her mind. What was that? That was her self-destruct programming. If you catch, remember, even before that, she was in a film. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Was it Freaky Friday? One of those movies that showed her with an evil twin. So, so the concept of twinning or having a dark aspect is, um, is a concept that gets revisited over and over again in Hollywood because it has a cosmic resonance, especially with the constellation of Castor and Pollux. Or even in mythology, we hear about Romulus and Remus. Or even in the scriptures, you have Jacob and Esau. So that concept of the good and the evil twin has always been a part of the quote-unquote human experience. So brothers, here is Rihanna trying to exude her quote-unquote sexual energy and her sex goddess archetype. Whatever you want to call that, whether it be Isis or Aset or Aphrodite. We see here that she's just showing her left eye to convey, as I've already stated, her allegiance to the mother goddess. She has her hair or her wig is bright red to exude that sexual energy, the mother of harlots. And notice what the what the subtitle of this magazine states. It says she's red hot. <laughs> what is that meant to convey? That's meant to convey not only that she's supposed to be a quote unquote sex symbol or really. A 
but also that she's trying to align herself, as I've already stated, to that energy from antiquity because it's nothing new. I mean, we call it being, quote unquote, a sex symbol today. But the original sex symbol was the quote unquote queen of heaven. Whether you want to call her Ishtar or Inanna or what have you. These females in the entertainment industry are taught about these concepts and they try to embody them on magazine covers and videos and movies, so on and so forth. But let's see what it says here in the in the subtitle. It says she's red hot sex symbol girls girl superstar Rihanna on getting hitched and her secret idol. But let's pay very close attention to the words that they have capitalized here. Because that's what they want you to concentrate on subconsciously. Sex symbol, Rihanna, secret idol. So what is her secret idol? When they say secret idol, they're not talking about someone that she looks up to. They're talking about an energy that she's trying to feed off of. They're talking about the mother goddess. That's how they communicate with you about what the quote unquote entertainment world or really the elite world is all about. They're not going to tell you outright because you're not privy to the mysteries you're of the uninitiated you're of the quote-unquote profane so they communicate it to you in a surreptitious way and either you figure it out or you don't they don't really care one way or the other it's at the point now, it's at the point now where they'll tell you outright what it's about and you either pick up on it or you don't and if you pick up on it they'll say i was just doing that to troll the people because everybody's saying that i'm a satan worshiper so i put all these images in there to have the people talking all that's bullshit they have to have those images in their videos because they have to show or give salutations to that pantheon of quote unquote deities that's so much a part of their world. So they can try to talk around it all they want. So brothers, this is more of the same. I have Hathor showing you that she's of the the lineage of the quote unquote cow goddess or she's a a modern day avatar of the quote unquote cow goddess, the goddess of knowledge. And she has the flower covering her right eye. Whether it be a lotus flower or a rose, both of those flowers are aligned to, to Aphrodite or Venus or what have you. So they're always using the same symbols to let you know what they're actually participating in. Now brothers, this type of imagery is very important, it's very essential. Whenever you see the female with the serpent wrapped around them, they're trying to convey to you that they are the modern manifestation of the Wajet, spelled W as in William, A as in Apple, D as in David, J as in John, E as in Edward, T as in Thomas, the protectoress of ancient Kemet. You had the serpent that was made a part of the Pharaoh's headdress, known as the Urias, the serpent that encircled the quote unquote sun. That was a way for them to try to, to communicate to those who were in the know and those who were not in the know that the serpent was the protector of the sun or the avatar of Heru, so on and so forth. We also know that in ancient Greece, you had the priestesses of Apollo known as the Pythia, who would have the serpent wrapped around them because the serpent was an image of divining or prophecy, so on and so forth. And as I've mentioned in other videos, for you brothers who read the scriptures in Acts the 19th chapter, when it tells you that there was a, a young girl there, a damsel, who had the spirit of prophecy. They were talking about a diviner. They were talking about a Pythia or a Python, per se. That's why they use the serpent and they wrap it around them. Because the serpent, once again, is meant to be an allusion to being the protector of the quote-unquote pharaoh and also of divining. Remember, the, the winding serpent or the kundalini serpent goes up the spine all the way to the pineal gland and it acts as a, a mechanism to activate the pineal gland or the third eye so that you gain spiritual powers things of that nature at least that's how the concept is is supposed to be taught this is rihanna right here once again trying to help those in the know understand what she believes in that being that she is a modern day kali when you see the snakes in her hair, quote unquote for Medusa, understand that the concept of Medusa actually was one of the ways in which the mother goddess Demeter was projected. The mother goddess Demeter, the term or the name Demeter actually just means the mother. 
that is the Greek version of Isis or Set. And we see they've given Rihanna the, the snake fangs. She's trying to, they keep trying to tell you the same thing over and over and over again. But let's get some context for this photo here because whenever you watch a movie about vampires, and I've mentioned this already, the concept of the vampire is really just a component of the Bacchanalian mysteries or the Osirian mysteries or the Dionysian mysteries or the Eleusinian mysteries. It all revolves around blood drinking and cannibalism. That's where you get the, the, um, the folklore of the vampire from. The vampire has to drink your blood to survive. And the Bacchanalian mystery, they drank blood because they believed that it would make them immortal. So brothers, this is an ancient depiction of the quote-unquote goddess Isis. But this is from the Greco-Roman time period. What they would do is they would take the comedic images and they would change them to make them look more Caucasoid or Caucasian per se, but the concept is still the same. The mother goddess being part serpent to communicate that what? She is the great protectoress of her son Heru. That, that is why many times that I've gone over some of these photos in the past, they'll show a black actor sitting down in the foreground and he'll have his hands in the shape of a pyramid. And then they'll have a black actress in the, of course, in the industry standing right behind him not directly behind him but a bit to the side while being behind him what they're trying to do is they're trying to do a modernized version of the pharaoh having isis or neftis behind him but they really truly believe in the entertainment industry that they are quote unquote gods and goddesses and that's why they'll tell you that directly and that is part and parcel of the saturnian belief system that once you elevate to the highest levels you become your own demiurge you become your your own great creator god and that's why you see so many people bugged out of their mind today so many people are bugged out of their minds today trying to make other people believe that they're a god this is rihanna's inspiration right here the quote-unquote hindu goddess kali and as we can see she has twin snakes or twin cobras the one cobra for the kundalini effect, the winding serpent going up the spine. The other serpent is for wickedness. They always have the balance, the righteous serpent and the wicked serpent. But Kali is the quote-unquote goddess of time. She's also the quote-unquote goddess of death. And I mention this repeatedly for those of you who've ever seen the film Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The, the antagonists against Indiana Jones were the thuggy, the followers of Kali. And it makes sense because even modern day thugs worship the mother goddess. That's why they act so damn stupid. You'll notice that most thugs, most thugs were raised by a single mother. And most of these single mothers believe that they're female goddesses. So it makes sense from a spiritual perspective. But once again, pay very close attention. Kali demands a blood sacrifice. Now we saw a few photos ago. Hariana would depict herself with her tongue out, with the fangs protruding. I believe I've used this photo in another video, maybe with Aaliyah. I'm not quite sure. But once again, this is where we get the folklore pertaining to the quote-unquote vampire. It harkens back to the worship of Asar and Aset. And the understanding that you had to embrace the drinking of blood and the eating of human flesh so that you could be immortal forever. Now this, of course, is another image of Rihanna mimicking her, her patron deity, Kali, with her tongue out and holding up her left hand in the Manu Cornuto horned hand sign to show you once again that she is a Luciferian. And you know what always interests me is that no one ever asks these quote-unquote celebrities why they do what they do when it comes to hand signs and sticking their tongue out, so on and so forth. No one ever asked them that. And that's because there's a bubble that's placed around many of these celebrities where you cannot even question them unless their handlers have gone over your list of questions. You can't confront them and speak to them unless they already know what you're going to ask their asset. Because there's a fear that the asset might snap out of mind control on, on the red carpet or at an event. And they just might go through self-destruct programming right there. Very similar to what happened with Mariah Carey on that, <laughs> on that day, that occasion. I would say probably 16, 17 years ago when she was on Total Request Live on MTV. 
back when MTV actually used to play music videos. You remember that Mariah Carey was there and she just started having a breakdown, a mental breakdown, because she's an asset. And I've already covered that. But all of them, all the high-profile artists are witches and they're under mind control. They have to be because that's how they get maintained. They're like a herd. And, you know, when they're not strong enough to be, to be a member of the herd any longer, they get culled. They get removed. They'll claim that, you know, the artist OD'd on drugs or got into a car crash or what have you, but they just got removed. Now, these are four high priestesses of Saturn right here. From left to right, Rihanna, Alicia Keys, Madonna, Beyonce, all four of them pansexual. All four of them. Of course, what I'm saying is alleged, but <laughs> you, you could take it to the bank. All four of them are pansexual. They have to be in the craft. Because they believe in gender and sexual fluidity. I'm going to say it again. They believe in gender and sexual fluidity. That's part and parcel to the worship of the quote-unquote Baphomet. Remember that the Baphomet is an androgynous entity. Meaning that entity has both male and female parts. As well as animal head. So that's why I always state that when I say pansexual. That doesn't just mean men and women. That also means intercourse ritualistic intercourse with children as well as animals please understand that in the ancient world the women of kemet would have ritualistic intercourse with a goat because that was meant to to um imply coitus or intercourse with a sar once again the goat was believed to was believed to represent the spirit of a sar or pata the great demiurge Okay, so brothers, every once in a while, if you're very fortunate and diligent, you'll come across a magazine cover, a photograph, or a depiction like this one, which is relatively straightforward. Normally, they're much more cryptic and furtive with how they depict or, or broadcast certain images of the resident witches in the entertainment industry. As we can see here, this is the cover of quote-unquote ID magazine, which we've seen used before to broadcast certain images of their assets, their monarch assets or MK assets per se. And even the very title of this magazine itself is meant to be an allusion to the veneration of the mother goddess. The wink of the right eye, the left eye open is for the eye of Hathor. And that's been a relatively common theme that we've witnessed over the course of this investigation into Rihanna's allegiances to or affinity for Saturnian principles or the understanding of the quote unquote Kabbalistic tree of life or as she calls it the tree of knowledge She calls it that because she knows that she follows behind the serpent And at the very bottom it says love sex magic. Why is that? That's in reference to mr. Alistair Crowley and many of you brothers might remember that a few years ago I say maybe around eight maybe as long as ten years ago The singer Sierra had a song with Justin Timberlake called I believe it was called love sex magic as well and that's in reference to the rituals that are done by these witches to try to court spiritual energies from the quote-unquote other world or the spiritual world that they can use to accrue more power for themselves in the physical world. But this one is very straightforward, very transparent. I'm surprised that they would, <laughs> that they would be so transparent in a magazine cover like this or on a magazine cover like this. But I guess they just don't give a shit at this point. It is what it is. Okay, so brothers, as we can see here, Rihanna has the colors of the quote-unquote black mass or the quote-unquote black Sabbath for Pan, that being the black and the white for duality, as well as the red for the quote-unquote blood sacrifice aspect. This is a common theme that you'll see, especially with many of the female artists, but the, but the males as well. But you'll see this especially with the female artists in the entertainment industry is for the quote-unquote black mass. This was a magazine cover that Rihanna did, as we can see that same theme of black and white, the bringing together of polarities, and then her name in red, because the color red represents passion, it represents lust, and it also represents the blood that is necessary to be allowed into the quote-unquote craft, or into that sphere, known as the entertainment industry. Now here, Rihanna and Beyonce are meant to be a, a modern personification of the twin comedic deities, whether you want to say it's 
Wajet or Nekbet or um, Hathor and Nephthys, but it was always the twin goddesses, quote unquote. One has on white, one has on black for duality with the red in the background. But that's just how they do it. And the so-called Met Gala, that's just a convention for witches. That's why you'll see that the witches and the assets, they always have to be there. You're going to see Rihanna there. You're going to see Beyonce there, Odell Beckham, the MK athlete, Odell Beckham. He's always going to be there. Tom Brady, Tom Brady Giselle Bündchen, who both just recently acknowledged publicly that they're witches. So, I mean, it's, it's becoming more and more blatant. Here's Rihanna once again trying to personify Aphrodite or the sex goddess who emerged from the ocean, from the waves. I believe that after Zeus conquered Kronos or Saturn and uh, cut off his private member, the private member fell into the ocean and the, uh, the sperm formed foams of waves and Aphrodite emerged from the foams of the waves. I believe that's how the story goes. Either way, Rihanna is, is trying to personify that as Aphrodite the quote-unquote sex goddess. That's why she has the red hair and the red lipstick, and they, ha and they have her posing here in front of the ocean, of course, with the one eye showing yet again for the quote-unquote mother goddess, the eye of Hathor, or whatever you want to call it. And the term Hathor just means habitation. So, of course, most of you brothers will remember that the song in the video that really jump-started Rihanna's career was the song Umbrella as well as the video for the song Umbrella, which was clearly Luciferian. And you know, I mean, it is what it is. That's okay. That's a part of the industry. They're all witches, particularly the quote unquote directors. The prominent directors of these videos are witches within the craft as well. And very much attuned to the energies of the Kabbalistic tree of life, so on and so forth. They have to be to make sure that they're, they're appeasing the quote unquote deities that they have to appease in order to make sure that the artists will ascend to the level of success that they need to have them ascend to. So in the video, as we can see here, here's Rihanna posing in a way to contort her body into the quote-unquote horned god who's within the divine delta or the divine doorway of the mother goddess, which represents what? It represents quote-unquote sex magic. Okay, so as we all know, this is Rihanna and Chris Brown. <laughs> The name of the name of the term that's used for their link up is Lucifer and it's very apropos. For those of you who don't know, within the Saturnian sphere, they believe in the concept of the brother soul and the sister soul. In other words, arrange relationships or arrange link ups. Like Jay Z and Beyonce. Sometimes they end up being fruitful like that one. Sometimes they end up being not so fruitful, like the link up of Rihanna and Chris Brown. They were meant to be a younger version of the Jay-Z Beyonce dynamic. And hopefully with those two being paired together, they could rise to a high level of prominence due to the fact that they both were very tempestuous in nature. It was never going to work, but they were matched. They were paired together and they're both MK assets. So just to provide some context to the statement that I made pertaining to Chris Brown, also being an MK asset, which many of you brothers should have known by now. Here's an image of him looking like he just <laughs> he just woke up from some type of electroshock therapy. He looks groggy and bugged out of his mind. And that's how they maintain, or one of the ways in which they maintain control over these monarch assets is through electroshock treatments, as well as the administering of prescription drugs and also non-prescription drugs. They need them to be strung out so that they can have a permanent haze in their mind. The only time that they're supposed to snap to attention is when certain trigger words are used so that they can tap dance their asses out there to that stage and make these record companies their money. But as we can see here, Chris Brown covering his right eye, he has the blonde hair for Hippocrates. And just the fact that he's allowing his left eye to be the eye of prominence, we know what? We know that he's also a worshiper of the quote unquote divine feminine, the mother goddess archetype. But I'll probably be dealing with the Chris Brown situation in another video. I just wanted to mention him because of his associations at one point with Rihanna or Rihannan, the quote unquote mother goddess. Chris Brown was meant to be Hippocrates, the divine child, the Heru in training. That's how he was being prepped. But 
He wasn't built for that concept. He was not built for that aspect. So they keep going with Rihanna. They push Chris Brown to the side. But anyway, brothers, that's going to be the end of this video pertaining to the Saturnian known as Rihanna. The concept of cosmic fire and cosmic ice. The bringing together of polarities. Or as it's analogized on many TV shows, Ragnarok. We saw that in the Thor film. We also have seen that in this, this television show on HBO that, that people love so much, Game of Thrones. But anyway, peace.